Hello and welcome to Magic and Pathfinder Part 7. So far in this series we've mainly discussed regular spells for lack of a better term, and in this video we're going to expand that discussion to include other types of spells, including focus spells, innate spells, and cantrips. A cantrip is a special kind of spell that is usually weaker than regular spells, but can be cast more often and with greater flexibility. There are two key features of cantrips that separate them from other spells. First, cantrips do not use spell slots, and therefore can be cast at will an unlimited number of times per day. For example, Electric Arc has been a very popular cantrip with my players. Cantrips have minimum casting levels, just like regular spells, although the majority of cantrips are like this one, first level. But what's different from regular spells is since this is a cantrip, it can be cast an unlimited number of times each day and does not consume any spell slots when doing so. The second key feature of cantrips is that they are automatically heightened to half the caster's level rounded up. In the case of most spell casting classes, this means you can cast your cantrips at the same level as your highest level spell slot. So if third level spells are the highest level spells you can cast, then you cast your cantrips at third level too. That makes it easy to remember, but this may not apply if you don't belong to one of the full spellcasting classes or if you receive your spells from an archetype or some other source. For spontaneous casters, this means cantrips work like signature spells in that they are freely heightened, but prepared casters still need to prepare their cantrips before they can be cast. For example, a first level wizard starts with 10 cantrips in their spellbook, but each morning as part of their daily preparations, they choose 5 of those to prepare. But once they're prepared, the wizard may cast those 5 cantrips as often as they like for the rest of the day. Focus spells are a special kind of spell and they're granted by certain class features. Just like with cantrips, they are automatically heightened to half your level rounded up and do not use spell slots when they're cast. And you cannot prepare a focus spell with a spell slot either they don't interact with the spell slot system at all. Instead, the caster must spend a focus point to cast a focus spell. Everyone who is able to cast focus spells have at least one focus point, and some abilities increase the caster's maximum number of focus points, but there is a hard limit of three. No matter how many times your pool of focus points is increased, you can never have a maximum pool of focus points greater than three. Also be aware that you only have one focus pool, meaning if you multiclass and receive a focus point from multiple sources, they're all combined into one pool of resources. You don't have to track that you got two focus points from your witch class and you got one more from multiclassing into champion. Instead, you have a single pool of three focus points that can be spent however you like on the focus spells that you have available from all the different sources. These points are fully replenished as part of your daily preparations, just like spell slots are, but a major benefit of focus spells is you don't have to wait until the next morning to get them back. The refocus exploration activity can be used to regain a spent focus point. This takes 10 minutes after which you regain one focus point, but there is an interesting requirement listed here. It says, you have a focus pool and you have spent at least one focus point since you last regained any focus points. The key there is the last bit that says since you last regained any focus points. So you have to spend focus points before you can refocus and get one of them back. What this means is if you have a focus pool of three points and use all three of them in an encounter, you cannot refocus three times and get all three of them back. You can refocus once and get one point back, but you have to spend that point before you can refocus again. Every time you spend more than one focus point in an encounter or between refocusing, it lowers the maximum number of points you can have available for the rest of the adventuring day. Also, it's worth noting that when a member of a non-spellcasting class gains focus spells, for example, monks with their key strike feat, they gain the ability to use the cast a spell activity so that they can use those focus spells, but the ability to cast these spells does not make them a quote spellcaster. 
In other words, if you are this monk and you use focus spells, you do not qualify for any feats or other rules that would require you to be a quote spell caster. Innate spells are another special type of spell that we should discuss. These spells are often considered to be natural talent and are usually granted by a character's ancestry or by an item and allow a character to cast spells without belonging to a spellcasting class. For example, an elf who chooses the otherworldly magic feat can cast any one arcane cantrip as an innate spell. This represents a natural talent for magic and has nothing to do with their class. They can be a fighter and still cast a single cantrip thanks to this feat. When you gain access to an innate spell, whatever ability granted that access will tell you how often you can cast it. For example, Otherworldly Magic lets you cast your innate spell at will, meaning as often as you like. But a dwarf with the Stonewalker feat can only cast their innate spell, Meld into Stone, once per day. And innate cantrips are automatically heightened as normal for cantrips, but not other innate spells. When you gain access to an innate spell, you can cast it even if it is a higher level than you normally would be able to cast. This is especially common with monsters who can cast innate spells. You also always have at least trained proficiency in the spellcasting tradition of your innate spells, and you use Charisma as the ability modifier when calculating the spell attack bonus and spell DC for innate spells, even if you use a different ability to cast spells granted by your class. See my videos Magic Part 6 and Magic Examples Calculating Spell Attacks and DCs for more information and a complete illustration of how that all works. I will include links to both of those videos in the description. Before we close, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our patrons. These videos would not be possible without their continued generosity and support. Members of the Basics for Gamers Patreon community receive special benefits like getting to vote on the topics that we cover in the future, and also they get to see these videos one week and ad-free before everybody else. Visit the link shown on the left of the screen and in the description if you'd like to know more about becoming a patron. If you would like to support this channel and help it grow, the easiest way to do that is by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you get notified when new videos release. And we can always be reached through our Twitter and Facebook pages too. Thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you soon with more Basics of Pathfinder.